Hi, I'm John Paul Martin, the Warning Coordination Meteorologist with NOAA's National Weather Service in Bismarck, encouraging you to attend Skywarn Spotting in your community when the National Weather Service comes out for that, or viewing severe weather safety online, a National Weather Service website, or through videos like this. Uh, National Weather Service website, www.weather.gov. In goes down when you get out of the shower or the swimming pool because the water starts evaporating off your body, off your skin. So the temperature may only be a degree or two, but it, nonetheless, that's why you feel cold. When it rains, if the air is very dry and it rains into the air, the rain evaporates. It does not reach the ground. So the temperature here where the rain is evaporating, the temperature goes down. Cold air doesn't want to be up there. Remember we said it's heavy, more dense, it wants to sink. So this cold pocket of air now rushes down to the ground. It's called downburst or microburst. Microburst is over a very small area that, the, that this high wind occurs. Downburst is just general. Any, any sinking air we can call downburst wind. If it's over a very small area, it's called a microburst. So this cool air sinks. And again, if this is happening in a thunderstorm, we're accelerating the downdraft the downdraft may be 80 miles an hour, now we're adding another 15 miles an hour to it. So your wind at the ground is not 80 miles an hour, it's 95 miles an hour. Knocking your trees over. Melting hail also will cool the air. All right, here's a downburst. They can be wet, like this one. This is called a wet microburst. Very technical now, wet. <laughs> or they can be dry. No rain. Under a dry one, what are you going to see on the ground if you have a dry microburst? You're going to see a bunch of dust getting kicked out. Not a tornado, right? Under a dry one, I'm sorry, under a wet one, you're, it's like a ball of water falling out of the sky. A ball of water falling out of the sky at a wet microburst. Rain foot. You ever hear of a rain foot? Here it is right here. It's like here's your ankle. Here's your foot, here's your toes on the end. See how that little curl up there? Looks like somebody's uh, foot. Will you use your imagination. <laughs> Wall 
golden tornado. Again, the rain gets heavier and heavier and heavier, starts to let up a little, you get hail, the hail gets bigger and bigger and bigger, everything stops right here. There's nothing that's happening until what? That sea tornado comes. But it doesn't happen that way every time. Absolutely not. Okay. You're, you are correct. You are correct. Um, on a, on a multi-cell, a line of thunderstorms, you'll often get the wind, right? Ahead of, on that shelf cloud, you get the wind. You get some rain. Last 15 or 20 minutes, it's gone. No hail, nothing. Right. And like I said before, you can get a tornado on the front side of a thunderstorm. You can. Absolutely. It's not always on that back side, not always on the back side, but most of the time it is, and most of the real big ones, in other words, the, the threes, the fours, they are going to be on this, what we would say, the classic case of a severe thunderstorm that produces a, a one of these big tornadoes. But no, I don't want to leave you thinking it's always this way. No. Right. The other thing is the uh, with multi-cell or, or clusters of storms, you'll get wind and then rain, maybe a little hail from the first one. Then you get wind, hail, and a little rain, rain and wind and hail from the second one and the third one and so on. And that one you say, gee, that thunderstorm lasted three hours last night. No, probably not. Probably it was the first thunderstorm lasted 30 minutes. And then the lightning from that one, the thunder ended, and the next one picked up. You didn't even know there was a gap. Now the last, next one went 45 minutes, and now it's an hour and 15 minutes it lasted. But in reality, it wasn't one thunderstorm, it was maybe two or three. Yes. What does the dew point have to do with the formation of this storm? Yeah, okay, that's, a, that's an excellent question that I really wish you wouldn't have asked. <laughs> <laughs> we, we talk about relative humidity. You've heard about relative humidity. Okay. The temperature of the air is of dry air when we say it's 48 degrees outside right now. That's the dry bulb temperature. The thermometer is reading 48 degrees. There's another thing that we call the dew point temperature. The dew point temperature is the temperature that if we kept everything else the same, in other words, we didn't change the pressure or the wind or any of that. We kept everything exactly the same, except we lowered the temperature. We didn't bring cold air in, it just naturally on its own, the temperature went down. The temperature at which you get saturation, 100% humidity, that's called the dew point temperature. It is the best measure, it is the best measure of moisture in the air that there is. It is the best measure. So if you had an 80 degree dew point, what? That would be bad. Tremendously stifling. Yeah. Uh, I think the highest ever in North Dakota may have been last uh, uh, 2011, maybe it was after the uh, flooding, severe flooding that we had. 81 at Fargo or something was the dew point. That is almost unheard of in North Dakota to get dew points that high. Almost unheard of. Even, even to get a dew point in the 60s in North Dakota is telling you in the summertime there's a tremendous amount of moisture in that air. The difference between the temperature and the dew point temperature is called the relative humidity. But see, relative humidity is what? Relative to what the temperature is. 20%, or let's do this, 80% humidity now outside is a whole lot different than 80% humidity in January in North Dakota. We say to you, in the winter time, you, if you live in North Dakota, you gotta use all kind of lotion on your hands and your body because the skin, your skin gets so dry. And you say, well, let me see what the humidity is. And I'm telling you the humidity outside is 98% in Bismarck on January 8th. And you're saying, how could this air be dry? He just told me it's 98% humidity. Here's why. The temperature outside is zero. The dew point temperature is minus one. See what I mean? So the humidity is very high, almost 100%. But you're taking that air from outside with a dew point temperature of minus one, and you're bringing it in your house. You're not changing it, it's still minus one. But you're warming that air, the air temperature from zero outside, you're gonna warm it up to 70 degrees in your house. The humidity in your house is now 10%. Because the dew point is the same as it was outside. But you brought that air in, you didn't add any moisture to it, but you sure warmed it up with your gas heat or your oil heat. You warmed it up to 70 degrees to make it feel comfortable. Your dew point temperature is now the same. Thank you for watching. 
continued in part 10, videographed by Matthew Kronberger. If you enjoyed the presentation, comment and subscribe to my YouTube channel at Matthew Kronberger, Bismarck, North Dakota.